this project um, is part of the major masters project, which is the biggest, most substantial piece of work you do when you're doing a masters. And it's as it's not a design subject, it's a practical project as well as written and theoretical. So I cho chose a portrait um, because my subject area is the translation of traditional artistic skills into the digital medium. And I chose a portrait of Patrick Stewart because I'm at Huddersfield University and he's the Chancellor of this university. Apart from that, he's also like a really good looking man and he makes a good portrait. He's got very noble sort of characteristics which uh, I think everyone can relate to and uh, it's, been, it's been fun doing it. What's interesting about his particular face or his visage is, is the structure. It's got a very interesting structure to his face. It's not, it's not a standard face and I think it's the same with quite a few movie stars. They've got very interesting features. Um, the proportions are unusual and the structure is it's very conspicuous. Um, so the, the bone structure, you can see where everything's going. And he's an actor, he's got a trained face, so he's got a very well-developed musculature under the skin, so it's very characterful. Um, this, this part of the jawbone here, now you think it's, when you look at it as a whole, it just looks like part of his face, but when you analyze it as a shape, He's got this really, really unusual scoop out of his face. <coughs> it's, it's, it's very unusual and it's very striking because when you look at his face from the front, you get that creates this lovely, almost geometric line through his face, which then makes, you know, and it relates to the rest of his face. Very strong, striking forms. So the cheekbones and the, the eyebrows, I think probably the most unique part of his face are actually his eyes. Um, you can see that they're actually very deep set and the skin comes almost right over the eye and it's ex extraordinary. And there's some in interesting things in his ear as well, I, I went to town on the ear, it's a very interesting set of shapes in there. And of course his skull. He's actually got, the portrait is actually moderated um, some of the shapes in his skull because when they're on a static object without the life of Patrick Stewart in it, they look a bit, um, you know, look a bit odd. And that's the same for everyone, when, you know, even when you're doing it in clay, you, you make it accurate and then you adjust it to make a sculpture from it because the sculpture is not the person. Also the man's posture as well, so, you know, he's got a very strong posture, which kind of, it's, uh, well, I don't know if he works on it or whether it's just natural, I have a feeling it's probably just natural. It gives a sense of presence and authority and, you know, it's, it's, you know when, when the guy is in a room, everybody's kind of looking at him because of that and that's uh, partly posture and partly the gaze was very calm, it's a very calm quality. And that gets expressed in the way the muscles are held. And that, over time, in the aging process, you know, creates the character in the face. So over years of that kind of calmness, and um, it shapes his face and, and the character lines. He's got a kind, trustworthy quality to him that everybody wants something of. Once you've made the, the, the portrait bust form in inside the computer, then uh, nowadays with 3D printing machines and rapid prototyping machines, it is almost, not quite, just a, a question of setting it to print, um, just like a paper print with text was before. It's not totally straightforward, but that's, that's the trajectory of the technology, and that's where it's going to end up. We did a test print from Z Corp printer, this beast over here. Um, it's relatively fine. It's got. It's intended for prototyping, so it's not getting a perfect surface, but it's it's getting quite good. You know, the quality is quite good. Um, so we did a small version, which we actually gifted to Patrick Stewart, and he came and collected it here and seemed to enjoy the process. It was it was quite fun. 
Um, but the next part of the process is, now that we know all the files work uh, and we'll communicate with the computers, is to prepare it for a full-size version, um, life-size. So because the machines have only got a certain volume of, of print that it can do, it's got to be divided up and then presented to the machine individually and then reassembled afterwards. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.